Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, the YouTube pipe community. Lewis coming at ya. How are you today? Uh, so, I got back from Kansas City last night. That was fun. Uh, I went to the KC Pipe Show. It was awesome. Now, granted, there's very little that can compare to the Chicago Pipe Show. You're not going to find a whole lot of of pipe shows that compare to the Chicago Land Pipe Show. But the KC Pipe Show was cool. Certainly more intimate, about a sixth of the size maybe of the KC uh, of the Chicago Pipe Show. But uh man, I would absolutely call this pipe show a resounding success. It was a lot of fun. Had a great time. I only got to spend one day there. Um but I had a lot of good friends with me and um, new friends, met some cool people and uh, saw some cool stuff and brought back home some cool stuff. So uh, I'm gonna take this opportunity to just kind of tell you about the, the Kansas City Pipe Show and uh, my experiences there and uh, show you this stuff that I brought back. So uh, I went to the Kansas City Pipe Show with a date. And that date was Sue Dunhill. She is the sweetest person, one of the most generous people in the world. And I am very, 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 very lucky to consider her a friend. So uh, we, we um, met up in the morning and she, she even brought a gift for my in-laws who were watching my kids during the pipe show. How sweet is she? Um, she told me, Lewis, don't bring any tobacco. I got us covered. Well, okay, Sue. I, I, I know to, to listen to the queen. So um, I, I brought a couple pipes. I did bring some just in case, but I didn't need to crack anything really open. Um, and we got to the pipe show was greeted right away by none other than Chris pipe miner awesome dude got to hang out with him quite a bit uh, and then uh, shortly after we ran into Smokey Mo and that was awesome as well a um, couple other people there with uh, I think carving Piper was there um, a couple other people with uh, within the YouTube pipe community and uh, we sat down together and got to enjoy a few smokes um, went around the pipe show there weren't a ton of <coughs> excuse me there weren't a ton of tables um, a few artisan carvers Scotty Pearsall um, Scotty's pipes was there um, um, I mean, uh, Jeremiah Sandall was there, um, and, and various other tables. I'm never going to remember everybody, but there were a lot of tables with, uh, older stuff. Missouri Meerschaum made an appearance. That was awesome. Um, there, there were a lot of tables with older kind of antique stuff. Some people were selling stands. Some people, Oh, some people had some cool pipe racks to put on your wall that were based on pegs. So you just put the stem in like this and the next pipe stood like this and you put your pipes down like that. That was really cool. And I, I if I didn't make my own um, pipe frames, I would have bought one myself. That was pretty cool. And uh, I, I went there thinking, you know, I'm probably not going to buy a pipe. That's not really gonna happen um and uh but i'll probably buy some tobacco and did i buy some tobacco uh i sure did and on top of buying some tobacco i was gifted a lot of tobacco and i'm thankful for that uh, but there were some ridiculously crazy deals uh going on uh and so I think I'm going to start with the things that were shared to me. So I, I really appreciate these things. And, uh, you know, um, the generosity of the pipe community is astounding. 
Uh, and what more can I say? We know this. The yabos that we do, just bombing people. That's part of the fun of this community. And uh, man, uh, Pipe Miner, Chris, bombed me right away. So he gave me three unopened tins of the Suge blends. So got Suge Gunjin, the samurai god. Um, it's an oriental mixture. Got Fujin, the wind god, right here. Uh, this is dark fired in Latakia and bright Virginias. And oof, this one is Rajin, Raijin, the thunder god. Um, and this is, seems, I think it's a vapor with a little bit of dark fired in it. Uh, and I've had one one of these before, but it's not any of these. And he was so kind to just give me these tins. I get, um, you know, he mentioned they weren't his favorites and he had plenty to smoke, but I'm always very appreciative. And I just dropped something. Okay. And then uh, Sue Dunhill, gave me the remainder of the tins that she brought for for the thing and and I'm stunned <laughs> as well um, first off howl of the wind uh, and this is these are all aged this one is from 2008 she gave me some Mississippi River this is still unopened, and this is from 2009, I believe. Macbaron uh, Mixture Modern, or Danish Mixture, and this is from 2000, oh come on, I had the, I have it on here somewhere. I think it's 2006. And some vintage Syrian. You know how much I love this stuff. This is from 2006 as well. I, I mean, right off the bat, I'm winning. So, oh, and Pipe Miner Chris also gave me one of his freaking sweet tampers. Goes really well with one of the pipes I bought. Okay. I was also gifted a couple other things. I was gifted some samples. I don't know who made these samples, but one of my friends, Fletch, oh, got some Pembroke. Um, I forgot who brought this, but some Pembroke. Um, got some samples of black coffee, espresso, honey and chocolate, and darkest caramel. And uh, I'm gonna enjoy these, and I'm also going to share these with my uh, my neighbor who I got into pipe smoking. And my buddy Fletch also found this for me. And this I'm excited about, this is a Diebel's tin. Uh, if you know me, you know that I'm into Diebel's Sportsman's Gallery, Diebel's, Fred Diebel, the pipe maker, uh, a Kansas City staple. And uh, he found this empty, tin from uh gosh i don't know when it must have been but uh i've never seen one quite this old so i'm really excited to add this to the collection and a last gift uh this is actually from from danny um danny heard that i was giving sue a ride to the to the show so he decided to give me this and I'm really thrilled with it. It's a, a bake light pipe. It's a wall. It's a Frank. I think a Wally Frank. It's called an EP silver. This bowl is silver lined. It comes off. This is bake light right here. Um, perplex, I think stem. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of work to it to get it tightened up, but these bowls are replaceable too. And, uh, I don't, I'm, I'm really enjoying this one and I'm, I'm really enjoying this and, and just to know who it came from and the fact that it was a gift means so much to me. 
So I'm going to be gifting something else to to another friend, just you know, passing along my good fortune. Um, I found this. This was at the show, and this is about a pound of vintage lemon Virginia ribbon from 1995. This, I believe, is a McClelland, Virginia. Um, I haven't dug my nose into it. I've left the jar unopened as of yet. But uh, this is going to go to my buddy Mike in New York. So I really hope he appreciates it. He's been looking for more Virginias. He has a hard time getting stuff up there for some reason. So uh, I want to send that to him. Um, I did buy two smaller jars for myself. And, you know, for what they are, those were a smoking good deal. These I'm also going to share with my neighbor. One gentleman was selling one pound bags of tobacco. He did not know what they were. One's an English, one's an aromatic. I might mix the two. We'll see what happens. But these ended up being 10 bucks a piece. Can't go wrong for a pound of tobacco. Two pounds of tobacco for 20 bucks. Can't beat it with a stick. Even if it's just like a rainy day, I'm out of tobacco, the tobacco apocalypse has come. There we go. Hold on one second, foam's messing up. Okay. From there, I got, this is only three I'm picking up, five tins of cabbies mixture. A couple tins of full Virginia flake. This I'm very excited about. Brown sugar. Got some brown sugar flake right there. A tin of grouse more. This is going to be interesting from my understanding. Um, a lot of these Sam Gaywith tins are aged quite a bit as well. Um, let's see. Got three tins of Capstan Blue from 2016. This Cabbies, I don't know when this Cabbies was was tinned either. I wish I knew, but I think this is a 20, 2015 blend? No, it can't be. It's not that old. I got this tin of Klondike Gold, and I don't know anything about it. It's from Legend Tobacco. Uh, I don't know anything about it. It seems really interesting. It's a, it's a full Virginia. Um, golden light and medium brown Virginia tobaccos presented in the classic pressed and sliced flake format. We'll see what it's like. Got a couple tins, and I thought I got more of this, but I got a couple tins of Rattray's Sterling Flake. A tin of Aaron Moore. A tin of Three Nuns. I'm excited to try that. A tin of 3P, Peterson 3P. Um, I hear these Peterson tobaccos are kind of put you on your butt with a nicotine. I'm not about that game, but in small quantities, it's probably going to be pretty good. Uh, a tin of Sam Gay with Buffy Flake. Let's see. Two tins of Dunhill Standard Mixture. One tin of Dunhill's London Mixture. I really like this stuff. I probably should have bought more. Um, two tins of Magnum Opus. And, you know, Magnum Opus and Cabbies I got on the mayor, Derek Tant's recommendation. Um, one tin of Hearth and Home White Knight. A tin of Apertif. One deluxe navy roll. A tin of Dunhill Durbar. Never had it. Never have. A tin of Solani Aged Burley Flake. And I keep hearing good things about this. I am not a big burly guy. But this might change me. Who knows? And... I did end up going to the banquet. So every year they put on a banquet. Um, 
and in the goodie bag from the banquet, goodie bags were supplied by Smoker's Haven, Premal Cheta. Um, got some pipe cleaners and stuff, a 2018 KC Pipe Show corncob pipe courtesy of Missouri Mearsham. And this one's kind of interesting. For corncob pipe, this thing is kind of heavy. I'm really surprised. But uh, it's going to last me a very long time. I love corncob pipes. And, oh yeah, I uh, also found a tin of exotic mixture. So, excited about that. Um, let's see. Uh, that goodie bag came with three cigars. A Romeo and Julieta. Don't know much about it. Um, a Cane D cigar. Don't know much about that. And a Perdomo Reserve Champagne Noir. That's probably going to be pretty good. I'm actually looking forward to that one, even though I'm not a huge cigar guy. And lastly, oh, oh yeah. And it uh, came with another tin of Dunhill Standard Mixture Mellow from 2014. Not scoffing at that one. Where are these other ones from? I have no idea when these others were were made, but I don't think they're that old. Um, so I bought three pipes. Two of them were only $2 a piece. This is one of them, and I'm really excited about this thing. I don't usually smoke a ton of tobacco at once, but uh, look at the bowl on this thing. Here is a pen. That's at least half of this pen's length in terms of bowl depth. Look at that sucker. That is really friggin' deep. Um, I guess so I can channel my my uh, inner general. I'm only a major. I'll never make it to general. But if I can feel like MacArthur a little bit at a time, I'll be in good shape. Fake it till you make it, right? This is another $2 pipe I got. Cuddy, or a, a little little devil, I think it is. Little devil Cuddy. And uh, this is the one that I, the only briar that I actually bought. And I got this from Jesse Jones at Blue Room Briars. And this is not one of his handmade pipes. He makes some beautiful pipes. He makes some gorgeous classic shapes. Um, but I can't afford those. And um, not right now, anyway. And and he was selling a lot of estate pipes and other people's pipes. Um, I almost went for a German guy's, this little snail, reverse calabash. It was really cool, but I was thinking more practically this year. And uh, after Chicago, especially. I got this beautiful Canadian natural finish. Nice craggy finish on there and this thing is so light it is so light um i was legitimately impressed when i picked this thing up i couldn't believe how light it is the the, the walls on the bowl aren't super thin but they're not uh, or, or super thick but they're not super crazy thin either and as long as you are responsible about your cadence this thing is gonna last forever this thing for a car pipe, for a beater, I mean, I'm not going to call it a beater pipe. It's a hand finished pipe. It's a really nice one. Um, I really like this thing. Um, it's one of the nicer Canadians. I don't think I own another Canadian or I might, but it's in my top two Canadians. If I do own another one, I can't think of one right now. Um, so yeah, that's the only briar I bought. But what the, what a haul. Um, I mean, and I had a great time. I got to spend some time talking to, to um, Brian of Pipes Magazine Podcast. I got to spend some time talking to Mike McNeil of uh, McClelland. Mary gave a wonderful uh, speech, um, you know, just kind of as a, as a homage to McClelland and, and talked about the history of McClelland uh, at the banquet. 
and I got to meet and uh, and chat with the one and only GL Peas. Uh, Greg Pease is an awesome dude. We share a lot in common in terms of our love of food and drink and cooking uh, and travel. And uh, so uh, we had some fun conversations during dinner and that was really great. Uh, he's the type of dude that I could uh, definitely see talking to a lot more. And uh, I hope to in the future. I mean, um, that was a lot of fun. I had a great time meeting everybody. Again, Chris, Pipe Miner, thank you. Smokey Mo, it was so great to finally talk to you and finally get to meet you. Um, it was so much fun to, to hang out with Sue Dunhill. She is a hoot. She's a great person. Um, and I got to meet a whole bunch of awesome people. And that's what this community is about. Uh, that's what the Pipe Show is about. Yeah, I came, I came away with a sizable and very respectable haul. Um, but I forgot to show you the best thing that I brought. Holy cow. Um, yeah, yeah, okay. I got sidetracked for a second here. Holy cow. I won a rat, uh, not a silent auction for something. And I can't believe I was the only person to bid on this. Maybe it's the inner dork in me. <clears throat> but I have to show this off. This is inside a frame. I'm going to reframe it. This is from the 2002 Chicagoland Pipe Show. It's pretty neat. The poster itself is pretty neat. It says, Dearest, PAD is incurable, but we'll get through this together. Pipe Acquisition Disorder. From the Chicagoland Pipe Collectors Club, 2002. It's, it, it's, it's a neat poster. But what makes it neater are all the signatures on it. Uh, Rick Newcomb. Uh, let's see. I think Tawny Nielsen. JT Cook. Uh, Paolo Becker. Um, <clears throat> what is it? Uh, Mario Scorti. W.J. Ashton. Um, gosh, there's a bunch of people here. But one very special, one very special uh, signature right there. That This is the one and only time Bo Nord ever made it to the United States. He signed this. He was in a wheelchair at the time. And uh, I, I may have one of Bo Nord's only autographs, at least in the United States. And that, for me, is freaking cool. Um... I'm a pipe collector geek, and I'll probably never own one of Bo Nord's pipes. Um, I can't believe I forgot to share that earlier. All things aside, back to my point. Uh, all these cool things, the best thing about this pipe, uh, pipe show was the people. It's always about the people. It's about the friends that you make and the camaraderie that you have with your fellow pipe smokers. There's a lot of awesome people in this world. You just gotta look for them. You gotta be accepting of people. And uh, you gotta be appreciative of the, the people around you and all the differences in the people around you. And uh, and enjoy them. And um, I made a lot of friends this weekend and I couldn't be happier about it. Um, that's it for now, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I had I had a little bit of Vowin number 22, courtesy of P Chris Pipeminer, in my uh, little Canadian earlier today. Uh, no more tobacco for me tonight. I love you all. Blessings and smoke rings. Ciao.